Hello. This uh, tutorial is to is a quick rundown of how to show you how to take a person out of one picture and place them in another. For example, we're going to take this boy out of this picture and put him in this picture here. And it's the process is basically going to be this. We're going to uh, cut this boy out of this picture like this. We're going to copy him and then paste him simply into this picture like that. Okay. Uh, so first thing we do, uh, we just need to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close these real quick. Don't need them. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to open up two pictures. I guess it's saving. Okay. So we're going to uh, open up two pictures, a background picture and a picture with a figure in it. Now the pictures that you choose to get, uh, you should... Uh, make sure they're uh, roughly the same quality and uh, the size uh, is not as critical but the uh, I find it works best if the picture of the person is larger than the picture of the environment that it's going to going into it, it kind of uh, blends a little bit better so I'm going to pick these two my boy in the Tower of Pisa and click open And you see to navigate between the two, you just click these tabs up here. And if you'd like, uh, on, if you're using the screens at school here, the, you got a lot of area here, so you can pull these off of this and arrange them so they're easier to go. I, I'm kind of restricted on real estate, so I'm going to put them back up into the uh, dock and back up into the frame. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to duplicate our background. It's always a good idea to duplicate your background, so in case you make a mistake, you can always fall back on it. So to do that, you just right-click on background over here and go duplicate layer. You can uh, just leave the name, background copy. Uh, you may want to name it just so if you, especially if you have a lot of layers, so it, uh, it makes it a little bit easier for you. So click OK. Then what we want to do is we want to make a layer in between these that we're going to use as kind of a just uh, something to indicate where we've erased. So I'm going to go to over here to, uh, actually there's two places, there's a button right there. If you click that it creates a new layer. There's also, you can go over here go layer, new, layer. Okay. This uh, is a little bit simpler. Now what you want to do is you want to drag this layer between these two. So I'm going to click on this layer and just pull it down in between the two. So you, now you see that layer is there. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, fill this layer with a an odd color so that it stands out from our picture. So if we look, uh, um, the way we change the color here is if you go over here and you click on your color palette right there, and you can see you can pick your color. Now I recommend for most pictures you pick like something pink over here, or uh, you know, um, very purpley pink color, kind of color, something that doesn't occur in nature very often. And then in this area, make sure you click in the upper right corner. So that shows your new color right there. That's what you, that's the kind of color you want. Sometimes uh, bright green may work better, just depending on on the environment. So I click OK, and I want to get the paint bucket tool, and I'm going to fill this entire layer with that color. So I go down here and it's located here. Sometimes uh, I think the default setting here is gradient tool right here. So if you see this gradient tool and you can't find the paint bucket tool, just click this little uh, arrow right there and hold it and you'll see the paint bucket tool pops up. So click that. And then what you want to do is over here, make sure you've got this layer highlighted. It's not, you don't want that one or that one. Make sure that one is highlighted and just click anywhere in the screen. Now you see nothing happened here, but if you look over here, you can see it is now this uh, this magenta color. Okay, And we can see that if we turn off that layer, if we turn off the top layer. These are just layers and they're like sheets of paper laying one on top of the other. So uh, if I turn on, there's my background layer. If I turn that off, I just see the transparent background. So I turn on the background layer, turn on my color layer and then turn on my top layer. And what we're going to be doing is going to look like we're drawing on this screen, but what we're really doing is erasing. And then this purple layer is going to show through the parts that we have erased. So I'm going to turn off the background layer just so I don't accidentally get it selected at some point. And I'm going to select the background copy or the top layer. This is the one I'm going to erase. 
So I come over here right above the paint bucket tool, you want to find the eraser tool. And again, if it's not showing, if something else is showing here, then just click on this and, and select eraser tool. Okay. So now the next step is I've got to e I've got to um, erase uh, a line around him, but I'm going to I'm going to zoom in to where I'm going to start here. So if you hold the Alt key down and spin your wheel, and wherever your cursor is is where you're going to zoom in. And if you need to, you can use these. Uh, scroll bars on the side here to kind of fine-tune your position here. I want to make, uh, I'm, I want to erase right against this skin here. Now I'm going to right click. If you right click with this tool, you'll see you get this brush selection tool. So I'm going to uh, pick a, uh, and again, it the size it depends on your picture. It's, you know, just something like this is what you want, about this size compared to his skin, something like that. And again, depending on the size of your picture, this could be tiny. It could be like a, a four or something as opposed, or it could be a hundred, depending on the size of your picture. So you just kind of have to play with it and figure it out. The next thing you want to do is set hardness down to zero. Okay. And then what you simply want to do, again, double check that you're on the right layer here. You want to be on the top layer. And then you just simply go along the edge of his body here. Now you want to make sure that you don't leave, see this little like white halo right there? If you need to go over it again, that's fine. And it's okay that you're going a little bit into his skin here because all you're doing to the edge of his skin is making it slightly transparent so that when he, when you get it into the next, uh, into the other picture, it will blend better. You'll find that if you look at this picture, his skin is kind of blended in, the edge of his skin is kind of blended in with the background. Okay. Now if you, you might get into situations like this where you've got a, a kind of a tight squeeze here. So I'm going to go in like this and you see I'm going over a couple times where it, if I'm, I'm kind of missing the, the, the light part against his skin here. You want to get rid of that kind of halo -y effect there that the lighter ground behind him is 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 creating. And okay, it's again if it's it's okay if it's blurry and if you need to back out to kind of get a better orientation where where he is, then you can do that. Okay, so now I'm in this part I'm going to get some trouble here, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to lower my brush size down and just go back and try and get it as best as I can. And then once you do that, you should go back to the same size brush you had before. Okay, I need to go even smaller here. Let's go four. That should be good. And again, this first time around, uh, you don't need to get in too too meticulous about it. So now I'm going to go back to my brush. And I don't recall. I think it was like 26 or something. And I'm going to zoom up, and I'm just going to continue this all the way up around his body. And the, this does seem meticulous, and Photoshop does have um, built-in tools that kind of help you with this. But um, I find it's not always reliable because sometimes the person is in in a uh, is in a background that kind of blends in with them a little bit too much, so it's hard to do. Sometimes you're lucky and you got high contrast, and you can use those Photoshop tools. But I find that this works every time. Okay. So again, I'm going to zoom out. You can see what I'm doing and I'm not going to have you watch me do this whole thing. I'm going to have you pause and, and, and do yours and then you will stop on there. But I'm going to pause here and you complete, uh, you do what I'm doing and complete this one go around. Okay. I just want to come back here for a second and show you uh, some issues that you might have with hair. Uh, there are uh, some other techniques you can use with like a semi-transparent eraser to kind of get it but just when you get to the hair uh, if needed you just kind of you know kind of just go at it kind of like this kind of haphazard you'll find that uh, when you go to uh, blend it in these fine little wisps of hair will will not be typically noticed so like right here you know if this little wisp is out on its own just get rid of it or erase over it and see I've got this little rooster tail right there just kinda do the best you can um, again there are techniques if you want to spend more time
to get the hair better uh, masked off. So, I, I'm, so I'm going to pause again and just uh, continue going around. All right. Uh, so as you can see, I'm back here, and you see what I've done is I've cut out uh, this purple line all the way around this character with a small, soft brush, or a salt, m small, soft eraser. Now, it may look like I drew a purple line here, but I'm going to show you what, I, what really happened here. See, if I sh turn off this top layer here, you see I see the pink background. So if I turn off the pink background, you see, now without the background layer turned on, I just see a trans the, the plain background, the transparent background. If I turn on his uh, the top layer again, you can see, if I zoom in, you can see that transparent checkerboard behind that area that I cut out. And so, you know, I turn on that the layer in between, now that's what's shining through. Okay, so that's, and it's, again, it's just a technique to try and, uh, so uh, so that you can see what really was erased. Okay, so the next step here is we're going to take our eraser and uh, we are going to zoom in again to our spot here. Now, I, I was playing with my eraser. Uh, it was set to 26. Let me put that to 26. Again, this is the eraser I had when I was erasing. So now this next on this next pass, I want to double the size of my eraser and again uh, this so 26 would do uh, that would be 32 right yeah no 26 would be 52 uh, and you don't you don't have to be precise 55 is probably good enough and then you want to take the hardness of your br of your eraser and crank it all the way up to 100 and what we're doing there, you see it makes a much more definite circle there. And what the purpose of this is now to get rid of this fuzzy edge on the outside of this. So I just go and I'm, I'm going to repeat the same process, go around the entire figure. Again, you can zoom out a little bit. You don't need to be quite as precise. And you just go all the way around the body like this. Okay, now I'm going to... Um, Pause again so I can complete this. So you don't have to sit there and watch me. So you do this while I'm uh, while I'm doing it. So uh, pause the video and go completely around this guy with this uh, with the larger brush with that's got this more solid edge on it. Okay, so I've completed the second pass, and you see it's a uh, it's a little more defined here. And again, I'm just gonna kind of repeat this procedure with that eraser. I'm gonna increase the size again this time I can I can depending on my situation here I can and uh, and how detailed it is I can kinda pick a larger brush and just go again go around him one uh, one time again here and again I might find some places where I need a slightly smaller brush uh, it looks like I might be able to get away with it this time so just go around him all the way around again. If you accidentally make a mistake, like on this side, I'm going to accidentally cut off his shoulder like that. You just uh, go Control, hold down the Control and Alt keys, and then tap the Z key, and it undoes your last thing. You can back up. Uh, I don't know how many times it allows you to back up, but you just keep going. Do that. So if you again, if you erase and erase too much, just Control, uh, Control Alt Z will back you up. I'm going to increase the brush size again. Now this time I can. Um, I'm. You're going to get to a point where you just use. You can just use an enormous brush and and just erase everything. I don't have to get so precise here. So you see, I just get here. So now this this last pass here, I can just. I can go nuts with this brush here. I'll make it larger here. See, I can. Oop, that's. Well, but you don't want to do that. That's way too big. You'll you'll notice this little scale here will jump. Uh, significantly, so it it's going from 400 to like 3,000 instantly. So I'm gonna oh, there's 1,100. So I can so with an 1,100 brush, you see a just really large brush, just erase everything else and make sure I got everything off the edge over there. Nope. Okay, I got to get everything over the edge here. Make sure I got everything off the top again. Oh, yeah, see, or you can zoom out, I suppose, and that that would help things. There we go. So you erase everything. So now, if we turn off the purple layer here, the magenta layer, you see all we have left is just the boy. So now we are going to 
uh, paste him into this other room. So I'm going to, there's uh, the quick way to do it with just keyboard shortcuts. I can also click this marquee thing and put a, put a box around him like this. Now I, I've got to make sure that I'm on that layer that he's on. I can put a marquee around him like this, or I can just simply go, if you want to make sure you get the whole thing, just go control A and you'll see, uh, it now selects the entire sheet here and it will only pick up things that are on this layer. So uh, we hit, once you've got it selected, you go Control C, okay, then you, then that copies, and then you go to the other picture here and with it just selected here, you just go Control V. Now you see he, this picture is enormous. So we have to scale them down. So I'm going to hold the Alt key down and I'm going to zoom out so I can see this picture more, much better. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control T. T is in Tom. And what that does is it selects uh, whatever is in this layer. Now the other way to do it is like this. You go to, with, with that layer selected, you go Edit and then down here free transform and you see it says control T there that's why I was able to do the control T so either way like this now now you want to scale this so that you can that he'll fit in the picture now it's important with these type of pictures that don't just start grabbing these handles on the side and doing this because you see he gets distorted okay he gets all distorted so that's not what we want so I'm gonna control Z here actually I, I guess I can't control Z Control Alt Z doesn't work here, so I'm going to just cancel right here. This is my cancel button. I messed up, so I'm going to cancel. So I'm going to zoom out. And again, make sure I'm on the right layer. Whoop. Go Control T, as in Tom. There's my picture. Now, what we want to do is we want to bring him kind of up into here. The, the way you do this now to keep it from getting distorted is click on the corner, grab the corner handle and hold the shift key down as you do it. You see no matter where I move my cursor he stays proportional to the way he was in the original picture. Okay, So that's what we want to do. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make him roughly about this size. I'm, I'm going to hold down the alt key and spin the wheel forward to zoom in. Um, if I grab, Still in this mode I can grab this picture and kind of put it where I want it. Let's see if I can center it. Let's see it will lock right on the center. Uh, he's still a little bit too big here, so I'm going to grab the corner again, hit the shift key down, move him over. Uh, maybe I'll just move him a little bit more over this way so that he's kind of framed between these two buildings here. And then once I like where it is, again, I can come back and, and holding the shift key down, grab these corners and kind of get them sized the way I want them. Once I get them where I like them, then I just click the check button right here and then that uh, what that does is it permanent permanently makes the changes here now you see it looks like a single picture here uh, he looks like he's there you know we could adjust the lighting and, and some other things to make it uh, look a little more realistic but if you notice over here there is actually uh, several layers here so if I turn off see I can turn off his layer and he's gone and turn off the background layer. He's gone there. Oh, you know what? I created a text layer. Okay, because I hit T without the hitting the control. Okay, so I'm going to delete. Uh, so anyway, so you can set these different layers, okay? Or you can turn these layers on and off to get the effect you want. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, we'll have other ones on how to do uh, layer styles and that sort of thing, uh, and we will see you then.